introduction to producer theory okay well you know as far as uh, as far as demand curves are concerned that they are they have come from the utility maximization okay that is utility maximization approach has given rise to demand curves that how actually demand curves are derived you know there's that given an indifference curve given the budget line you can draw an in, you can draw a demand curve well supply curves they actually come from profit maximization approach of producers okay and this will make our model complete a demand curves and supply curves together also note that in case of demand curves okay in case of utility maximization approach prices are given to consumers okay they're given to consumers they're exogenously given to consumers consumers can't change prices themselves but in case of producer theory producers they set their own prices okay that is though in perfect competition even producers are given their prices and they can't charge higher price lower price whatsoever they are given the price okay but in general producers they can set their own price and this gives them power over 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 their own product okay other thing which you have to understand it that inputs is something which goes in the production process they feed in the production process and this generate the outputs what you get is basically the outputs and what is the goal of the producer goal of the producer is to maximize profits okay goal of this producer is going to be maximizing this profit what exactly is profit profit is revenue minus cost as you could see profit is basically revenue minus cost uh, and how does producer maximize profit this is going to be our huge argument in the next recordings well producers they maximize profit using efficiency in production how does this efficiency is achieved okay given the given the uh, cost budget which the producer has it has to maximize its own production or given that this is the production level i have to achieve then how do i minimize my cost so we'll we'll, we'll study about the efficiency in production in detail then remember that there are two kinds of inputs one input is the labor input another input is the capital input labor is easy in sense that hours of hours uh, which you put in work okay this is labor input well capital is something which is difficult to generalize okay um, well capital could be buildings your physical capital capital could be machines again a physical capital capital could also be a financial capital okay but in order to make things simple we'll consider capital as everything else that goes into production okay apart from labor so these are two kinds of inputs that you have other is a production function well in case if you look at the production function what exactly is the production function production function is the relation between the output this q and these inputs k and l so these k and l these are the inputs and this is the firm's output okay and this relation this these these inputs they feed into the production process these inputs they feed into the production process and this generates the output okay so these are the inputs uh, and uh, they're being used according to some production function according to some relation between the output and input and they produce what is the firm's output this this small q is basically firm's output and this capital q is market output okay well this leads us to the to the discussion of what exactly is the variable input well variable input is something which could be easily changed over time and fixed input is something which cannot be easily changed over time but in case if you look at it something like labor now say for example your labor works for 8 hours okay labor could also work for 6 hours 4 hours 15 hours these okay so this is like a variable input uh, you can increase or decrease the amount of labor which you are using but in general okay even this variable is not that variable ha huh? this variable is also not that variable you can't increase or decrease the labor at your own whims and fancies you can't do that okay there's a contract which is signed okay so variable is also fixed at certain time ha huh? and fixed inputs are those which could be easily changed in the short term in the sense that like for example buildings for example machines for example buildings for example machines 
They couldn't be changed in the sense that you paid for machines, you paid for buildings. You just can't go out of business. Okay, you just can't. You, one, you can't just go out of business. Other is that you can't change on the second day. You have invested a lot of money into building. Tomorrow you can't say that no, I'm going to use half of the building, or I want to increase the uh, number of floors which I have, or I want to shift to the other building. It's it's not that easy. Okay, so these are fixed inputs. This leads us to the discussion of what exactly is the long run and the short run. The long run is basically that period of time in which all variables, in which all inputs are variables. Okay. Over a sufficiently large period of time, you can change building. Over a sufficiently large period of time, you can change machines. Okay, labor is of course labor, uh, labor is of course variable, so you don't have to worry about that. Short run is that period of time in which some inputs are fixed. For example, buildings. For example, machines. You can't change them. Huh? So this is a brief introduction of uh, of, of basically your producer theory. In the, in the next recordings, we're going to talk about the short run production, long run production, MRTS, what exactly is marginal rate of technical substitution, and what are returns to scale. Huh? Okay.